from it. Destiny arrives all the same. Day number two rolls on here of the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games in beautiful Madison, Wisconsin. We are inside the Rogue Tent at the Alliant Energy Center. Thank you so much for being with us here today, everybody. I am Sean Woodley with Annie Sakamoto and Chase Ingram as we are now set for the next round of competition. The individuals are going to be up with their event that was just announced. We're going to get that to you in a second. We have some updating to do on some standings. Just a little bit. <laughs> a little update. Let, let's go to the overall standings for the men right now. And this is after four events. And some of you who have been paying attention might notice that, hey, these look different than the last time we saw them. And there's a good reason for that. And these are not the correct ones. <laughs> these are the old ones. Matt Fraser used to have a 20, what is that? Four point lead? I'm not good at math. Now, <laughs> Matt am. Fraser has a two-point lead over Noah Olsen. Fraser still in the overall lead at 311 points. Olsen is now in second place at 309. So only three points separate first from third. James Newberry is just three points out. There's a drop off after that. But why did that happen? Well, you probably all have seen on social media, Matt Fraser on one of his ruck runs had one of the weighted bags fall out of the back of his pack. He did not replace it. He was assessed a 60 second penalty. He now finished 17th in that event. That means that he earned just 68 points. But this has certainly made things a lot more interesting. I don't know when the last time that we said Matt Fraser was feeling the heat on a Friday. And it's interesting in a, in a way, a sense, because it's not due to a performance issue. It, it had to do with how the event took place. And in the midst of that event, Sean, as you said, a bag had fallen out of his pack during the event. And you know the, the assessment of the penalty the other part is he's having little hiccups. You see he dug the skids of the plate directly into the ground during the last event. So it's not a clean run for Matt Fraser. So maybe that might be part of the right. heat. It's, it, it's still not the athletes, though, that are pushing the tempo. Yeah, and that's a good point, because when we were here in the pregame show the, uh, yesterday, we yep. said, well, what can stop Matt Fraser? Matt Fraser and mistakes, and well, here we are. And, and then it's really important that these other athletes capitalize on these mistakes. Right. So, so these other athletes need to look at, oh, now we're two, we're one point behind Matt Fraser. Now's the time to, to strike. So that's the big news right now, is Matt Fraser's score getting adjusted and the mar margin getting even tighter at the top of the overall leaderboard. But what else has stood out to you so far? Well, for me, it's been Noah Olson. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he has been within reach of the podium the last two years at the CrossFit Games. So he finished last year in sixth place. And the year before that, in 2017, he finished in fourth place. The, the podium slipped out of his grip on the second to last workout. And so for him right now to be not only in second place, but like we just said, only two Two points behind Matt Fraser is a really good spot for him to be, especially when we look at the event that we're going into next. It's an event that I think will favor Noah Olson. Mary, he should do really well. There's some other names in the top five that are surprising. Jacob Hepner, I think, might be one of them, and just because we just haven't talked about him in so long. And it was funny because we talk about him a lot, but he actually never ends up being at the CrossFit Games. Right. He's missed it the last two years due to weird circumstances yeah. that really had no part in the fact that he didn't have the ability to make it to the CrossFit Games, but he just hasn't been here since 2016. He's been hard charging at the leaderboard. Of course, he had a 29th place finish in the previous event, but it still kept him up close into the top five. And now you have an event coming up that if I were to rename any benchmark workout, yeah. I would rename Mary Hepner because of <laughs> There, he posted a video of him doing that workout to near 30 rounds before, and that wow. is just absolutely insane what he can do in this event. Yeah, so Jacob Hefner, he sits in fifth place right now, 272 points, but he's only one point up on Samuel Quant. Uh, some names that you're not going to see in the top 10, a pair of Canadians, Pat Vellner, he currently sits in 11th place overall. Brent Fakowski is in 15th. Is it a little bit of concern now for either one of those guys at this point? 
Definitely, I think so. Uh, you know, I think Fikowski, we talked about yesterday, that, that first event yesterday, he didn't come out with the fire that I would have expected in Brent Fikowski. And then to have that little um, kind of bobble at the end of the handstand work, workout was a little bit uh, worrisome to me. So not the, not the start to the CrossFit Games that I would have hoped for from Brent Fikowski. And, and on Vellner's side, for both of those guys, they haven't really asserted their dominance like they have the ability to do here every once in a while throughout the CrossFit Games. I mean, you have Fikowski that he wins events, right? If there's anything that he can do is that he'll get his event wins. We just haven't seen a clean run from yeah. either one of the Canadian men. Someone we have seen a clean run from is James Newbery. He is within, I mean, a hair of the top of the overall leaderboard. He has certainly put this all together, and I think Michelle Latondra had a lot to do with that this year. I mean, to have a coach at this level is so vital and so important. And now we're at the, the, the point now at the CrossFit Games where you can almost see the difference between athletes based off of the coaching that they're getting. Well, and especially in, a, in an event like this weekend where there's so many unknowns and unknowable, you're going to rely on a lot on that coach to keep you calm, uh, to, to help you with all the preparations. You know, when they make these short announcements, when you only have 20 minutes, maybe an hour to get ready for an event, you're very dependent on your coach to help you with whatever kind of strategies you might need. I think we have updated standards. Okay. So like the CrossFit Games, we have also updated our leaderboard. So one more time, here's where we stand. This is correct. So Matt Fraser went uh, from a pretty comfortable lead to now just two points, and he only leads James Newberry by three points. After that, a little bit of a drop. Adrian Wimweiler is in fourth, followed by Jacob Pepper and Samuel Quant. Scott Panchik and Cole Sager, Lucas Hogram. Look, you only have 21 points separating fourth from 10th, and there's still guys on the outside of the top 10 who can easily punch their way in here uh, in the next event. Let's go over now to the women's overall standings where we saw the shakeups kind of take place at the top of the leaderboard over the last two events. Tia Toomey, she's awesome, we get that. She's in the overall lead, that's expected. Amanda Barnhart, we saw her on the sled in that last event. That's essentially what she has done on the overall leaderboard. She is now <laughs> in second place by just 13 points. Kristen Holta is in third, just being her typical Kristen Holt itself. Carrie Pierce, who led after two events, she is now back and forth, and Jamie Green is in fifth. Danielle Brandon has moved up a spot. She is in sixth. Alessandra Bocelli, Laura Horvath crawling up the leaderboard. Emily Rolfe had an event win, and now Anna Fragkow, because of her performance in the last event, she cracks the top 10. But we talk about Tia Toomey all the time, so we're gonna go down one spot to Amanda Barnhart. She looked impressive last year at the games, clearly had some holes though, but I think those are gone now. Right, I was so excited to see her on that last event. Just like you said, kind of hard charge towards the, towards the finish line and up the leaderboard because this was the glimpse of Amanda Barnhart that we got last year at the games when she won the speed clean and jerk ladder and did so well as a rookie. So far this weekend, she's taken a 19th, a 4th, a 15th, and then of course the first place, the event win on that event four. Um, and we haven't even really seen outside of that snatch in the very first event, a heavy barbell come out. So bring us a heavy barbell and I think we'll see Amanda Barnhart solidify that spot in the top 10. Three names that you did not see in the top 10 and I think we're a little surprised that they are not there are the women who are collectively known as the daughters. That's Annie Thor's daughter. She is in 13th. Sarah Sigmund's daughter, she is all the way down in 25th. And Catherine Davis' daughter, she's in 15th. What's going on with these three? Well, the, the daughters are kind of going the way of the Canadian men currently on the women's leaderboard is that they are tumbling down the leaderboard. In fact, the current top daughter at the games is Turi Helga daughter, who's sitting in 12th place above the other three. And this is uncharacteristic of the daughters that we've seen. And it's just been a tough day. We saw Annie start off the day in event number three and just got, she just got broke by this event on the ruck. She ended up walking, 10 overheated. Sarah Sigmund's daughter just hasn't had a good start to the weekend. And that was the one thing we were really concerned about with Sarah Sigmund's daughter was how's the headspace, how's the, uh, the, the fierce Sarah that we're used to seeing. And, and she's put in a lot of work to fix that, and it almost seems like it's not, it's almost getting worse yeah. than we've seen at any stage of the CrossFit Games. And look, keep this in mind, she's in 25th right now. There is another cut looming down to 20, so right now, Sarah Sigmund's daughter is on the wrong side of that line. I couldn't imagine a scenario 
coming into this where she got cut, and now here we are. Right. That's, that is just hard to fathom. Next event, though, Sarah is going to have to do really well. That was just announced. It is one that we use as a benchmark in CrossFit. It is called Mary, and it is a 20-minute AMRAP of five handstand push-ups, 10 pistols, 15 pull-ups, <laughs> and they're going for the whole 20 minutes. What are the keys here to this event? A lot of this is just managing your work and understanding your own game plan. 20 minutes is a eternity. When you have movements like this with bodyweight triplets, you know, it's the, it's the harder version of Cindy. Right? We have five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 air squats. But the other is having quality movement while you're doing this event because there's so many repetitions, there's so much room for error. And then with these movements, handstand push-ups, pistols, 15 pull-ups, if you have poor movement, you're going to get no reps, and those aren't easy reps to just snake through. Right? Those reps are going to make taking its toll by the end of this event. Let's look now at some things that we want to pay attention to, and that's places 15 through 25 on the overall leaderboard. We mentioned that cuts are coming. We don't know when, but you've got to get yourself inside the top 20, probably in a hurry. So for the men, these are the guys who are kind of on the bubble right now and who need to really score some points here in order to get themselves uh, inside the top 20. Do we have that? We do. Okay, so Ant Haynes right now is the last guy who's in. Logan Collins, he is in 21st. So Saxon Panchik is on the wrong side of things right now. And Sean Sweeney and Alex Vigno. Now Vigno is a guy that I think we expected to do well here. We haven't seen him at the games, but remember back in 2016, he was the only other guy not named Matt Fraser who was on top of the overall leaderboard at some point. Guys like Mike Smith, Carno Duddy, Elliot Simmons, so pay close attention to them because now the pressure is certainly on. We don't know where the cut is, but they have to hit a home run here in this next event. I mean, you look at Logan Collins at 21, you might pop that name back up into the top 15 because when you're talking about an event that you need to come up before a cut comes, Logan Collins with Mary, it's, it's a good one for him. What now do these athletes who are on the, uh, the cut line, I know you have a plan, when you do marry. You know how you have, they've all done it, and they know how to pace it out. Where do they need to now adjust in order to make sure that they can have the best performance possible? In, in my opinion, their mentality, mm -hmm. right? Because now you have an event that you've done multiple times before, you're very familiar with these movements. They're not difficult movements to do. You got handstand push ups, pistols, well, pistols are a lot <laughs> harder Depends for some than are. most. Yes. <laughs> these athletes, not too bad, but keep. Like I said, a lot can go wrong with these movements especially. When you're talking about a 20-minute event, do not let the fear of getting cut, because we don't know when it is, they especially don't know, dictate your pace of an event, especially at one at this length. And knowing your pace on an event like this, so it sounds like if Hefner's done 30 rounds in 20 minutes, that's a sub one minute round for every round, right? So if you if you know that, if you've done this, this workout enough that you know what kind of a pace to hold, then that really could benefit you. When you look at the top of the leaderboard, the pressure's on Matt Fraser. I don't think he's going to blink at that. But when you're that close to him, I don't know how these guys handle it because I don't know if they expected to be in that situation. So guys like Noah Olson and James Newberry, what does that do to them knowing that, you know what, if I go out and beat him, I'm now the overall leader? There's two ways a lot of athletes kind of respond to pressure. One is the fear of failure, but I think what's more difficult to deal with is the fear of success. And yeah. being up there north towards the top end of the event, being two points away from Matt Fraser. You have been given a gift. You have been given a 30-point gift. You are now <laughs> one event away from leading the CrossFit Games mm -hmm. after four events. So it's not like this happened too early. Is trying to stay calm with being so close is going to be a big thing to manage because most athletes are like trying to overcome adversity. Right. And overcoming a success, I think, is something that is much more difficult to do at times. Yeah, I was thinking about what would it look like if going into day three of the CrossFit Games, Matt Fraser did not have that white jersey on. Yeah, and that's a very realistic possibility. I mean, normally at this point, it's like, okay, he's, he's running away with this. Let's now concentrate on second and third. But mistakes cost him. He is now in a spot that 
he is kind of unfamiliar with, and that's two guys breathing down his neck. I mean, if Noah Olson or James Newbury beat him in this event, there's a very good chance that those guys are in the overall lead. And they are totally capable yes. of yeah. doing that. Yeah. It's not, I wonder if, it's like they absolutely could. Mm -hmm do, you know, in an event like this with Noah Olsen and James Newberry. And the, the past two events that we've watched, James Newberry has just kept himself right in Matt Fraser's hip. Right. This is going to be a little different of an event because it's just, a, it's an AMRAP. They're going to go all 20 minutes. But look, if you just stay close to that guy and keep him within, dis within striking distance and you know when you can strike, you're going to make up that deficit. We're going to head inside the a Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center here in Madison, Wisconsin for the first time. We're going inside under the lights. That's always a a special atmosphere here and the fans here in Madison that the, are, are filing their way into that facility. Others are trying to get themselves in front of one of the big screens here that we have throughout the campus to check out the action. We're going to have a special guest with us join us in just a second. One Josh Bridges is going to help call the action for us as we have two heats of 15 men. They're going to go first, but yeah, looking forward to getting Josh up here because that's a guy that knows what it's like to perform when the lights are on. Oh, at this stage, at yeah. this level, especially with an event like this. I mean, what he did with Weighted Cindy a couple years ago yeah. at the regional. Mm -hmm. All right, so I would love to hear kind of Josh's take on that in terms of the event itself, the athletes that are competing against, and the pressure that are coming into this event. I mean, look at this setup that they're having in the Coliseum. There's, there's nothing like it. Once again, here are the overall standings. It's Matt Fraser with a two-point lead over Noah Olson and a three-point lead over James Newberry. Then there's some separation, but Adrian Moonweiler looking really good in fourth place overall. That's the highest he's been on the overall leaderboard since he won the opening event of the 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games. Jacob Hepner is making a triumphant return. He is now in fifth place. It's followed by Samuel Plunt and then Scott Panchik. And this is the test. It is Mary, as many rounds as possible in 20 minutes of five handstand push-ups single leg squats and pull-ups. Chase, where's the sticking point here for these athletes in, their, in this event, if there even, even is one? Uh, I would say it depends how tall you are, because when you're, <laughs> going, when you're looking at an event like this, this isn't meant for anyone north of the six-foot Mason Dixon yes. line when you're talking about pistols and handstand push-ups. But a lot of this has to do with, obviously, your gymnastics ability, your conditioning. But like I said before, your ability to move well for this many repetitions for this much amount of time is going to be huge because, you know, pistol no reps can fly at you out of nowhere like that, and those are not easy reps to get docked from. Yeah. I think a lot of this will also come down to your pulling stamina. 15 pull-ups, uh, you know, for 10 plus rounds, for, for a lot of us, even a lot of these athletes, I think is going gonna, is gonna to work on their stamina. We are being joined now in the booth by a man who really needs no introduction. He's a guy who, like I said, knows what it's like to perform under the lights and give us some very memorable moments while doing so. Josh Bridges is here. Josh, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, yeah. guys. I really appreciate it. How the CrossFit Games been going for you on, on this side of things? You know, it's an interesting it's an interesting side to be on, but, I, I, you know, it's been fun to watch so yeah. far. These have been some awesome, awesome events. And you guys are crushing it. So. Thanks, man. <laughs> Just saying. And here we go, we're underway, 20 minute AMRAP. It's Mary, it starts with five handstand push-ups, then 10 pistols, and then 15 pull-ups. We're gonna work for all 20 minutes. 15 men on the floor for this first heat, 15 men on the floor for the second heat, and a lot of guys in this heat are trying to get themselves inside the top 20, because that's when the next cut is going to be made, or that's where the next cut is going to be made. We don't know when, but some of these men are trying to stay alive here at the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. Right off the bat, you see the pace is a, a, a little bit tempered, which is what you want to see. I mean, 20 minutes is a lifetime when you're talking about an event like Mary. I mean, we know S Cindy is the, I would say, the, the simpler version. I've never really called Cindy simple to do <laughs> yeah. until this showed up. But when you talk about the total volume, it's like you do have to pace yourself out. And I think the hardest part, and Josh, you can speak to this, is that how hard is it to reel yourself back in at this you know, when you're on the stage with this type of event. Right, that's that's the thing, is underneath the lights like this, this is a very hard situation to pull yourself back because this is the first time these guys are in the Coliseum tonight and getting after it, and they these boys are feeling, they got some adrenaline right now. And this is definitely, like you were just saying, a workout where you cannot come out of the gates flying because at 10 minutes, that's when this workout sets in, right? This is a pull-up workout. Um, you know, everyone, you, the handstand push-ups for these guys isn't going to be a big deal. The pistols, you might see some guys start to falter, but this is going to be who can hang on to that pull-up bar the longest and take the shortest breath 
breaks when they fall off. What was it about this environment that always seemed to bring out the best in you? I, you know, it's just, this is just, this, I mean, I, I just got chills just even thinking about it, you know? <laughs> I really did, I was just like, oh, wow. It's, it's an amazing feeling, and the, the crowd is so intense in there, and you're just, you're down, and, like, you're down, you're sitting down where everyone's up and above you, and it's just, it's so close, and I don't know, it's just something, I don't know, I loved it. I loved every second about it. I wish all the workouts were in here. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a special, it's a special environment, as was the Tennis Stadium in Carson, California, yes. where you had some great moments as well. I think about push-pull and that battle you had oh, with Rich Froning. And, uh, yeah, that, that was, that was something special to watch. <laughs> finish of all time. <laughs> that was a fun one. Scott Panchik right now is uh, through three rounds, as he and Matt McLeod have separated themselves a little bit from the pack. There is Scott Panchik. That was, uh, I'm sorry, that was Logan Collins that we were looking at. It's the bald head that threw me. <laughs> Impeccable taste and hairstyle, by the way, Logan. Beautiful. Nice job. Matt McLeod is through three rounds. Scott Panting is through three. Alex Vigneault, Logan Collins, and then Jason Smith as well. And now Ben Smith working his way back. And we see a couple of the guys around. wearing lifting shoes, obviously for help on the pistols, uh, and then not wearing shoes, uh, lifting shoes. For me, that would be the weight on the pull-ups. What would you do in this situation, Josh? I don't wear lifters yeah. ever, um, even on lowly lifting, but that's just me personally. Right. Um, I actually used to wear lifters, and when I did pistols, I wore lifters. Right, right, right. So, uh, but now, yeah, I would not uh, exactly. I don't know if it's the, I don't think the weight really is going to become that much of a factor, but so if you if you feel like it helps you that much on the pistols, I would wear them. It would be it. worth it. Yeah, definitely. That's Willie George, one of the men who's kind of sitting on the bubble right now. As far as the next cut uh, is concerned, he is 29th overall. So he's got some work to do. Willie George has got to come up with a strong performance here to get himself inside the top 20. And again, we don't know when the next cut is going to be made, but you don't want to be worrying about it if you're not inside the top 20 after this event. It's Logan Collins through four, Matt McLeod, Scott Panchik, Jason Smith, and Willie George. And now Matt McLeod's starting to separate himself along with Scott Panchik as the two of them are through five rounds. Back at the Rogue Invitational, you were responsible for, for programming that event. What was it like to kind of be on that side, the guy who gets to cook up all the tests? <laughs> that was actually a really fun, uh, you know, to get to do that and to be, be a part of that and help out in that little scenario. And it was... You know, it's it's so much harder than you think oh, yeah. because you think that oh, I, I I could program this way better. I'm so much better at this, and then and then you're like oh here here's here here you go. You get tasked with it, and uh, it was tough. It was really fun though. It was a fun you know to test the workouts and and try to play with numbers and come up with time domains that you because it, again every like everything is so orchestrated right. You have mm -hmm. to have the right time domain. You have to have everything, and then and you have to think about the athletes, and you don't want to make anybody look bad. You don't want to make it too easy. Right. So it's 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 a tough thing. It was it was super fun though. I, I had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, it was a blast to watch and a blast to call. It was a lot. It was a great event. I thought and, and, and a really comprehensive yeah. test. Uh, and to do that across just two days was really impressive. Yeah, I was. I was. That was the one thing that I was like looking at. I was like, man, eight workouts in two days is a lot. Right. But but we're putting we're we're sending someone to the games. So it's like you can't like where is that buffer line? You know. Yeah. yeah. But there. There was that one event, and I don't know what it is, but I know you know what it is, that you're waiting for them to do, so you can just sit back there and twiddle the fingers like, good, <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which one was that for you? That was the dumbbell uh, handstand push-up workout. Yeah. Yeah. I really yeah. loved that workout. I, I thought it was a blast, and uh, they, they, they crushed it, though. They did actually really well, um, and they moved through those handstand push-ups. So some people got caught up on them, and... I think it threw people that the it was on the parallettes and it wasn't from the floor and so it seemed higher even though it wasn't a huge deficit and I think that played with people. But I think parallette handstand push-ups for me they're a lot harder having to, to, to hold the parallette versus having my hand flat even for a deficit push-up is, is a much harder push-up for me. Yeah I agree I mean when I think you're getting more more depth yeah. right you know yeah. so. Logan Collins, Matt McLeod, and Scott Panzik are in the lead right now. They are through seven rounds. We're working for the whole 20 minutes here. Yeah, <laughs> this is... Sorry, this, Saxon this Panzik, pardon me, not Scott Panzik. Scott Panzik is in the next seat, that's Saxon. This workout really, I feel like it starts at 10 minutes. Like the first 10 minutes, you know, everyone's gonna probably be pretty close. And then at 10 minutes is where 
I mean, gosh, it's so seven times 15, what is that? That's a, they're already 105 pull-ups, you know, so. That's incredible. Right. <clears throat> and not even seven minutes into right, the workout. Even, yeah, exactly, and you still have 13 more minutes to go. Yeah. I mean, they, and look, a lot of these guys, they're just trying to stay alive. They don't know what's coming up, but how is this effort here going to impact these guys with, as they kind of try to figure out what's coming up next? Right. That, that was the thing that I, I was thinking about when I saw this workout come out, and I was like, I heard Mary, and I didn't see exactly how they were doing it. I was like, oh, they're doing a full 20-minute AMRAP. <laughs> I'm like, their hands are going to be destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Their lats are going to be destroyed. You know, it's like... This is, a, this is a brutal, devastating workout to, to put into the mix on Friday. Yep. There are a lot of men in this heat right now who are in danger of being cut. I mean, we talked about what a great start Ben Smith had. He's on uh, the right of your screen in the, in the blue shorts and no shirt. He currently sits uh, in 26th overall. Uh, he's had an eight and a fifth, and then he took 39th and 40th in the last event. So he's fallen way back. So Ben Smith has to start making up some ground to get himself inside the top 20 so he can continue on in the competition. Jason Smith is also another guy who's on the wrong side of that cut line. Sean Sweeney, uh, Saxon Panchik, so all these guys. Logan Collins, who right now is in the lead through uh, nine rounds and counting. He's at the top of your screen in the, in the pink shorts. And Willie George is in 29th, so he's got to start stepping on the gas here because in order to pick up points, he has to start finishing ahead of the men who are in front of him in the overall leaderboard. How, when you were out there on the floor and, and competing, how much attention did you pay to where you stood in the standings and, and, and I, how did that affect your performance? You know, I paid attention for sure, like it, exactly. Like if you don't know where you're at or what you're doing, then for me it's like I'm just out here blindly shooting, right? So I like to know where I was at. I like to know what I needed to do and who I was, who I was chasing, the, the, the people right in front of me as well. Um, it wasn't the most important thing I thought about, but I definitely paid attention to it. Mm -hmm. uh, for these guys out here, this is different though, with cuts, when they're doing cuts after every event, like these guys have to be on the leaderboard more than us, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. This is crazy. Right. And so, I think it's fun, I think it brings a new element to it. it you, you, can't, you can't just say, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna focus on the leaderboard, I'm just here to have fun. You can't do that anymore, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Like, no, you're not. Because if you don't focus on the leaderboard, you won't be here. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> you have one more event and you're out of here. You'll be so. having fun in the beer garden. <laughs> right. And that voice you're hearing is uh, Josh Bridges, who's been kind enough to join us here to help call this event, as Logan Collins and Matt McLeod continue to lead. Saxon Panchik, Elliot Simmons, and, and Alex Vigno. I mean, these are all guys who are, are trying to work their way into the top 20. And now the problem is, is we still have another heat, and those times are going to be a factor here, so you can only race against your heat. Well, there's the big advantage of being in the second heat, especially with an event like this. Because if you have enough time to get information from here, going into the second mm -hmm. heat, knowing exactly how this affected the heat prior to you. you know, we said it was a disadvantage at the last event from the sprint. I think that made everybody go out too fast. That's why the second heat was so much slower. It's a massive advantage, in my opinion, being second to seeing this entire event unfold for at least one heat. Yeah, I completely agree on this, uh, this event. You, you definitely want to be in the back end and see what, what you need to beat, where you need to be, because then you can actually watch the times go by and you can actually chase your rounds and be like, okay, this is what I need to make each round. And you can back your pace off if you need to back your pace off if you come out a little too hot. But these guys are exactly, they're shooting blind right now. These guys got to come out and give it everything they got. They're, they're like you said, they're, they're bubble athletes. And so all they're doing right now is just going as hard as they can. I saw Connor Duddy going through his pull-ups. He's now back on the handstand push-ups for the left side of your screen. Next to him, uh, number 145, that is Ant Haynes, who had a pretty decent performance in the in the sled push. The Logan Collins and Matt McLeod, Saxon Panchik, those still your three men uh, who are fighting for the lead as they have completed 11 total rounds. And Matt McLeod is through 12, and he is your leader a few reps ahead of Logan Collins and Saxon Panchik. I think one tough part about this event is actually the setup of the floor that maybe most people wouldn't traditionally think about being an issue is that there's really no break. You can take your own personal breaks, but there's something about having space between the elements. Like the last time I did Mary, I did handstand push-ups in the wall, walked outside to do pull-ups, <laughs> and then walked back inside mm -hmm. to do the pull-up rig. And I feel like there's something about coming off the wall and just looking right dead in front of you. He's like, now I must do pistols. And then stepping two feet forward to do pull-ups. There's something about that tight, cyclical nature. I think it's, it's tough to right. deal with when you're moving something like that. Yeah. It's, like, it's like when you have 
three different barbell movements with one barbell and right. you don't get to move. Yeah. You're like, what? <laughs> where, I don't like where do this. I go? Yeah. I don't like step this. Away. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'd like to walk 30 feet and get to the next <laughs> barbell. Logan Collins on his pull-ups. He is in round number 13. Matt McLeod is also in round now number 14 as he just wrapped up 13 rounds. We're past the 11 minute mark, approaching the 12 minute mark here. 20 minutes that we're going to work. Uh, this is an AMRAP. Ben Smith is on the right of your screen. He's next to Casper Gamblemark, and Ben Smith is in 26th place. And Ben Smith is three rounds off the lead pace here. Yeah, this is right now we're at 12 minutes. This is where the this is where the workout is going to start to be won right here. Right, where, who can keep holding the pace that they're holding? Who can find the right time to take the right breaks and not take too much rest? And get too long on like an oral or, or start breaking down your pull-ups into singles, right? Who can actually hang on here and do your three sets of five or, or your ten, or your set of ten, your set of five, whatever they're doing? Um, this is where it starts right here. Well, I'm impressed too because it looked like on that last set, Logan Collins still went unbroken. So he's in his, you know, twelfth round of pull-ups, still going unbroken for 15. Yeah, I when I when I saw this workout announced, Logan Collins was the name that popped up immediately in my mind. I think Matt's going to come out. I think Frazier, especially after what happened with the Ruck, he's going to come out. He's going to do really well. Um, Hafner, <laughs> like all these the same guys you guys were talking about earlier. Uh, but Logan Collins, I think, is going to be up there, and he's going to put a good number up for those guys to chase. Yeah, he's had success with events that have handstand push-ups in them. He won the Fibonacci final back in 2017. It's his first <clears> career event <throat> win at the CrossFit Games. That he and Matt McLeod, uh, to take a look at Logan Collins, are on the lead pace. Saxon Panchik also threw 14 rounds, but Matt McLeod is a handful of reps ahead of Logan Collins as Collins now works his way for his 15th set of 15 pull-ups. That is your leader, Matt McLeod. Next to him is Elliot Simmons on the right side of your screen. I'm guessing that Logan Collins threw his chalk right yeah, there because after this 15th round, they actually moved to the opposite side of the stadium. I was wondering. Uh, yeah, I didn't see it. That, that was set up. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. I so like once that. they're through 15, they move to the opposite side, so so we can tell visually where they're at. Like there are your two weird. leaders, Matt McLeod, kicking up to start round 16. He is in the middle in the blue on the left side, and that is Logan Collins. He is in second place, and now Saxon Panchik is about to join them on the other side of the Coliseum floor. I kind of want to circle back to what Josh said about Matt and tailing off of how it pays to be in the second heat, especially for an event like this, is that Matt's greatest asset now is that you have one of the best guys in heat number one to set the pace for you. Mm -hmm. right? It's not like, oh, okay, I think this was a good time. He's going to put up a top five score yeah. in this event, and now he gets to watch that happen. And now combine that with Matt Fraser. He's probably not in the best mood <laughs> going into this event. <laughs> you know, and I said an angry uh -oh. Matt Fraser is a dangerous Matt uh -oh. Fraser. So now Logan oh. Collins, it looks like that might just be a, a little bit of a cramp as he's. I think he might have stepped on that. Uh, he might have. So Collins is looking at something and. Jumps back up on the pull-up bar. It won't be a problem here. Not really able to kip. He's doing strict pull-ups. That's pull a cramp. Yeah, that's a cramp This move. is his seven, 16th round of pull-ups, and he's still knocking out strict. But I don't know if he's going to be able to do pistols. Something yeah. happened to Logan Collins. He's been doing strict I, handstand push-ups the entire time. I would probably have done strict as well. And Matt McLeod <laughs> uh, is in the middle on the left side in the blue <laughs> shorts. He's your leader. He is on his pistols. And now Logan Collins is on his pistols as well and able to get one. And now Logan Collins looks oh, like he is shaken off wow. whatever was bothering him and hearing it from the crowd as he does so. Nice. That's good to see. On that, that he'll feel that after the workout. The adrenaline <laughs> will wear off. Yeah. And he'll feel that after the workout. Matt but McLeod he's... is your leader. He's on the left. That's Elliot Simmons on the right, but he's a full round behind Matt McLeod right now. McLeod is on round 17. Nice. Well, Simmons is, is getting still, ready to finish 16. 17 rounds, and we still have four minutes or three minutes, 45 seconds to go. And now Logan Collins looks like he's doing just fine.
Saxon Panchik, 22nd place, a guy who needs to at least gain two spots here. But you talk about going second. When you're someone who's sort of hovering on that cut line, how much of an advantage is it for you to go second in that kind of scenario? Yeah, it's going to be big for some of those guys. So Willie George, he's another guy that's got to make up a lot of ground. 29th overall as the field's going to get cut down to 20 eventually here. He and Alex Vino are also on the other side of the floor along with Matt McLeod, Logan Collins, Elliot Simmons, and Saxon Panchik. And there is Logan Collins who is in second place in this heat behind Matt McLeod. And still able to knock out sets of 15 on the pull-ups. And remember, a couple sets ago, he was going strict. And he's trying to track down that man, Matt McLeod, who is on his 19th round. These guys are going sub one minute rounds. Still. With Mary, For still. Over, yes. Yeah, still. I think I've, I've done Mary, and I remember the first time I hit 20 rounds, and I was like blown away. Like, <laughs> it was like, this is not, and I was, I was destroyed. Absolutely destroyed afterwards. Oh, wait, you, let's talk numbers. I mean, you're doing 20 rounds. It's 300 pull-ups exactly. yeah. in yeah. a span of 20 No, minutes. thank you. Right. 200, 200, air, or 200 pistols and... Uh, 100 hand sound yeah, pressure. Yeah. Ridiculous. But, but it's okay, because they just did a, a ruck run to start the day. <laughs> they got warmed up. And, and 15 bar muscle-ups in between a sled sprint. So they're warmed up. Ben nice Smith, loose. middle of your screen. Man, just... Falling back here in the pack, and this does not bode well for Ben Smith, who got off to such a strong start on day number one. He was in the top ten to start day number two, but he has since plummeted down the leaderboard, and he currently sits in 26th overall. And if the cuts happen after this event, Ben Smith might not be moving on. And it's not a testament to Ben Smith's fitness and ability, but it's a testament to that, you know, he hasn't been able to train for the games. Right. this entire offseason, which normally he would have the ability to. Plus, I mean, he's coming off injury. He had a great day yesterday. I mean, classic CrossFit, a bunch right. of triplets out there. But the toll of the entirety of the weekend, I think some people just don't understand. Like, they see this event, and Andy just said, it's like, oh, by the way, we just had these other two today. You're right. Well, less than a minute to go now, and it's Matt McLeod still in the lead, getting ready to finish up his 20th round. Logan Collins is in second, and it's Sa Saxon Panchik who is in third. Logan Collins had a little bit of a blown tire earlier, but it looks like he's <laughs> fixed that thing, and he's moving very well here with less than 30 to go. He's got a push right here if he wants to catch him. Fifteen seconds to go. Matt McLeod still working. Matt McLeod is in contention for possibly his second straight event win as we hit the final seconds. And the question is, is did he get through 21 rounds? He got back to the handstand push-up wall, I think. But he got really close to getting through 21 rounds of Mary in 20 minutes. Logan Collins will finish in second place in the heat. It looked like he got that. Logan looked like he got that one pull up. Yep. And I didn't see and how many McLeod got. Right I, now it says that McLeod got into his 20th round but did not complete it. So McLeod, Collins, and Sax Saxon Panchik all in their 20th round. And then after that it was Simmons, George, and Gamblemark. But this is one of those things where you see people who are really, really good at something make something really hard look very easy. The fact that those gentlemen were still doing unbroken sets of pull-ups to me is absolutely amazing. Uh, like Josh was, I mean, even Josh was saying you would already start to be thinking about how you were going to break up those pull-ups. To be holding sets of 15 in 10 plus rounds is absolutely mind-blowing. And at this point in the comp, I mean, it's day two. Look, they've, they've had a lot to do today already. Yep. I mean, earlier today, that event, you know, 40 minutes of running with a you know, pack on your back, that's going to take its toll on you. And then you come in here and you're able to you know, knock out that many pull-ups. Well, it's not like unbroken. we did any massive upper body pulling right. movements exactly. yesterday either. Yep. Just incredible for Matt McLeod, who right now 
that has the score to beat 20 complete rounds. He was into his 21st, got close to finishing it, but we'll see if anybody will be able to chase that down in the second and final heat for the men here in event number five. It is Mary, and spots in the final heat, or I should say spots in the rest of the competition. You are know, on the line here as we are at 30 athletes in the field right now. We started with around 150. We cut to 75, down to 50. We're now down to 30. We're going to cut again down to 20. So points are extremely crucial and extremely valuable at this point in the competition. First time of the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games that we are inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center here in Madison, Wisconsin, as day number two reaches the afternoon session. The individuals facing the fifth test of the CrossFit Games. It is a benchmark workout. It is Mary and Pat Vellner right now is safe as far as the cut line is concerned, but he wants to get himself into the top 10 because that is ultimately the only group of individuals who will not be getting cut and who will be able to complete the entire competition. Overall standings once again after four events. Matt Fraser, courtesy of that penalty in the Ruck event, has now just a two-point lead over Noah Olson. James Newberry, he sits in third place, 308 points. Drop off after that, it's tight between Adrian Moonweiler, Jacob Hepner, and Samuel Quant, and Scott Panchik. Only 21 points separate fourth from 10th. Saw some pretty incredible stuff in heat number one, just three movements. And it's incredible that these athletes are able to comprehend doing them unbroken for a full 20 minutes. Uh, just the, the time frame, the difficulty, and not necessarily the movements themselves, but the compounding total as we get to the end. The cloud, 20 plus rounds. We're talking over 300 pull-ups, 200 pistols, 100 handstand push-ups. But the good thing is for this heat and for someone like Matt Fraser, is that now you have a benchmark to shoot for as you pace yourself through this event. Right, these guys know exactly how many rounds now they need to get to, to, to probably get into where they wanna be. And now they even have times, right? They know how, how, many, like, how many seconds they need to be taking on each round, right? They already know, okay, we gotta be going like probably about 52 seconds, 51 seconds a round. To, to, if I want to win this workout or if I want to be up there towards the top. So it's a, it's a huge advantage to be in the second round. And I'm excited to watch it. I'm excited to see what these boys do now after watching that first heat where there's guys still doing unbroken at that last round. That was insane. And these now are the overall leaders. So seven, eight, and nine. Those are the lanes you're going to want to watch because that's the battle for the overall lead right now. Noah Olson, we mentioned it in the last event when he finished second, he still has never won an event ever at the CrossFit Games. And if he can do it now, he's going to replace that guy as the overall leader. I think he's going to have to put in some work to do that. I would agree with you because you, uh, a nice Matt Fraser is dangerous enough. A mad Matt Fraser is right. going to be uh, look out. <laughs> We're underway, 20 rounds plus, almost 21 rounds. The top score that belongs to Matt McLeod, who is your leader after the first heat. We're working for all 20 minutes, five handstand push-ups, 10 pistols, 15 pull-ups, as many as you can do in that 20-minute window. And Matt Fraser and Noah Olson moving to the pull-up bar for the same time on round number one. Wait, are you saying Noah Olsen's going out really fast? <laughs> well, look, Noah Olsen has a history in the CrossFit <laughs> Games of making some crucial mistakes at bad times. He hasn't done it yet, but if you can find a way to shake that off. Well, he did his first round sub 40 seconds, so we'll, <laughs> we'll see if that was That's a, a little bold strategy, or Cotton. Not. Let's see if it pays off for him. Move. You know what? He'll 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 rein it back. I think it, I think that might be a little bit of nerves coming out under yep. the lights again. The first the first time this weekend we're seeing the Coliseum. Noah's fired up. He knows where he's at. Yep. He'll, he'll, he'll rein it in a little bit, I think. And to Josh's point, it's like Noah has matured a lot over the years in terms of the way he approaches events like right. this. He has the coaching behind him to kind of set the tone. But every once in a while, you know, the, right. the old little kid inside just says, you know what? Fast and unbroken sounds like a great idea. Hey, everyone knows if you don't win the first round, you don't win. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a well-known fact. Of a 20-minute amateur. Yeah. 
And Noah Olson is your leader. He's through two rounds. Matt Fraser just slightly behind him. Plenty of men still on that lead pace, but Olson now uh, back for his third round of handstand push-ups, and he's ahead of Matt Fraser. James Newbury is behind the two of them. That's your battle for the overall lead. I'd say that one person I'm kind of concerned about in this particular event in total is actually Brent Fikowski there on the far left of your screen is that he's sitting in fifth place, 15th place right. overall. We're not sure if they're cutting after this event in particular to 20, but this is not the event you wanted to see when you start inching closer to that cut line with right. Brent Fikowski. And this is one of those cases where we've talked about order of events matters and for a guy who's trying to you know, stay inside that cut line, I don't think this is the event you would want to see. And the point I'm trying to make is like, I'm not saying he's bad at this, but relative to the field Correct. that he's competing against, right. this isn't the event for Brett Fikowski. Yeah, yeah he's going to have to uh, he's going to have to go hard here. <laughs> Some hopes and prayers. Yeah, so Brett Fikowski has 236 points. The man in 20th is, is Ant Haynes. He's already gone. So Fikowski would have to drop 19 points to Ant Haynes. So that, and that is totally that adds 100 percent possible. possible in an event like this. So Brent Fikowski needs to maybe find another gear. Meanwhile, James Newbury is fighting with Noah Olson for the lead, and it's Matt Fraser who is in third. So Newbury, who started off a little slower than Olson did, is getting set to wrap up round number four. But now Olson is done with four, and uh, Brent Fikowski. He's back in the pack here. It's still earlier in the event. We're only at the three minute, 12 second mark of a 20 minute event. And Noah Olson being done with four rounds in about at about the three minute mark means he's holding about a 45 second pace still. It's a bold strategy. We'll see. We'll see how it <laughs> plays out. Yeah. I think that right now he could be, you know, he's 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 definitely fired up, but he needs to rein that in a little bit. Um, you know, I'm not Noel Olson, but 15 pull-ups at that pace, that's going to start to get really tough and really spicy. Where I think I know Matt, Matt's the kind of guy who knows his pace and he's going to go right. out and he's going to stay in it. He's right. not going to chase the rabbit like some guys, like some younger guys would. So, If we're going off the scoring hat, there might be some confusion because James Newber, they had him in the lead there for a second. Noah Olson now is back in the lead through five. Scott Panchik has five rounds. Jacob Hefner, Matt Fraser, so still tight at the top. Now it says James Newbery is a round behind Olson. The leader's name is always displayed in the blue box at the top of your screen, and then anybody in the red box, the number in their white box is either how many reps or rounds they trail the overall leader by, or if they are tied. And right now, a lot of guys are on round six with Noah Olson as we are through four and a half minutes of this event. So Olson. Middle of your screen, blue shorts and the headband right next to Matt Fraser in the red shorts. Just two points separating them coming into this event. Will Morad and Pat Vellner, Morad hopping off the pull-up bar. Those green and white shorts in the headband. Here comes Pat Vellner. And Vellner in 11th place overall, 252 points. He and Brent Fikowski, two men that we expected to be inside the top 10 here in the overall standings, have yet to kind of find their rhythm here yeah, that's, at the 2019 games. That's very surprising to me, too. I was, I was thinking the same thing. Patrick, or Vellner and Fikowski not being in the top 10 is, is a little shocking, but uh, still a long weekend, hopefully. <laughs> For them. Right. The three overall leaders are right in the middle of the floor. It's Matt Fraser in the red shorts. Then on the right in the headband, that is Noah Olson in the on the left is James Newbury. The two of them kicking up for their handstand push-ups. Matt Fraser working his way back to the wall as well. So Noah Olson is through seven rounds. The score to beat belongs to Matt McLeod, who almost got through 20 total rounds. Yes, six minutes is a fast way to knock out 105 pull-ups on the pull-up bar. <laughs> and when you're looking at the total number of rounds, you're approaching seven. You finish seven, moving into eight at the six-minute mark. I think as you approach the later half of this, you know, as Josh says, this event starts at the 10-minute mark, mm -hmm. and then especially in the last five, is that this is kind of one of those events and workouts that banking some time early 
isn't a, ba a bad idea as long as you're not pushing the pace. Like going unbroken for seven to eight rounds isn't the worst idea, maybe even to 10, because you have the time in a 20 minute time frame to break up pull-ups when you need them. I think that should be saved more towards the end. Yeah, definitely. I, I would not recommend just going out and breaking them up immediately, especially if that's, like for me, I'm the kind of guy when I actually start to break, it almost starts to like get in my head a little bit. Like why am I breaking already? So I like to go unbroken until I can't anymore. Um, so yeah, that, I mean, I, and some people like to have that plan though and stick to their plan. But uh, for me, yeah, I, I agree. I agree completely with you, what you're saying. Well, and I think a lot of that is going to come down to knowing what your pulling stamina is over a volume of pull-ups that size, right? Past seven minutes, and it's Noah Olson on the far right of your screen, and Matt Fraser in the red shorts, who have basically been right next to each other, figuratively and literally, in this event. As Noah Olson has been slightly ahead of Fraser, but Fraser is keeping pace. Both of them are through nine rounds. That's Travis Mayer. who has had a pretty good day number two. 12th overall after that sprint couplet. Chandler Smith, who's been all over the leaderboard today, finds himself you know, back inside the top 10 after he was inside the top 10, then he was 18th and now he's back. <laughs> the consistency for Chandler Smith seems to be the thing that he's got to dial in here, but he has proven that he belongs here. I think you see a lot of that with new yeah. athletes coming in that have a very good skill set. I mean, we saw the same thing from Brent Vikowski when he first came to the games, is that he would win events or he'd get something outside the top 30. Same thing with Brooke Wells when she first started, right? right? She got fifth place at the games and got last twice in yeah. two different events. So someone like Chandler Smith that has the skill set to do very well in some events and maybe not in others, it's either you know, he might be the Ricky Bobby of the CrossFit Games, like a first or last type of athlete. But when you get those averages out, I see that a lot with new athletes with a, with a decent skill set coming in. The guy you talked about, Jacob Hepner, has now pulled himself into the battle for the lead as he is on round number 11. Jacob Hepner is in lane number six. He's in the middle of your screen doing the pistols right behind that that support beam that reads Rogue on it. Now he's working his way to the pull-up bar. So Jacob Hepner. Noah Olson, Scott Pants, Matt Fraser, Will Morad, they are all on round number 11. Fraser's pull-ups are just so fast. I mean, even compared to Noah Olson's, who are really fast. Olson, Fraser, and Hepner all done at the same time as James Newbury's fallen off the lead pace. Olson is done, Fraser is done. Now right onto the pistols. Olsen wasting no time. He's just trying to keep the lead on Matt Fraser. And look, the points are so close that really all Noah Olsen has to do is beat Matt Fraser in this event, and he's on top of the overall leaderboard. Approaching the halfway point of this event. Noah Olsen still leads. He's through 11 rounds. He's on the pull-up bar. Jacob Hepner joins him on the left of your screen. And here comes Matt Fraser. Olsen is done, 12 rounds down. One more look at the event. We're doing this for 20 minutes. Handstand push-ups, single-legged squats, and 15 pull-ups. No Olsen still staying slightly ahead of Matt Fraser, who's in the red shorts. And Jacob Hepner is a few lanes down from them. Round 13 for Olsen and Fraser. It, the one thing I'm noticing from Noah Olsen is that he's pushing the pace in between the pull-ups, right? He's quick to the rig for the handstand push-ups. He doesn't waste any time on his pistols, where it seems like Matt's using that push-up and pistol as kind of a break between the set of pull because as Josh said earlier, it's like it's just a pull-up workout. It's like right. every time you turn around, the pull-up bar is in your face again. Now Noah Olson to start round number 14, and 
starting to put a little distance between himself and Matt Fraser. Fraser just getting done with his pull-ups, and Noah Olson is on to the pistols. Well, the other thing I just noticed too with Noah Olson is he's chalking once every like two to three rounds, where you can see a lot of these athletes, Matt being one of them, pretty much chalking every time they get to that pull-up bar. Yeah, Noah's doing a great job for transitions right now. Yeah. He's not taking a long time to transition. He's moving, <laughs> as I say that he takes a knee. <laughs> oh yeah, Josh yeah. Bridges, I'll well, show you. I'll just shut my mouth. <laughs> well, meanwhile, these are the guys who need to worry about keeping themselves off the bubble. Brent Fakowski on the far left of your screen, as I said, came in in 15th place overall. He's 15th place in the heat. Overall in the event, he's in 30th place at the pace that he's in. Mm. That is not going to help his cause. No. Pat Bellner, meanwhile, uh, is 11th overall. So he's a little safer. He's in the middle of the screen with the multicolored shorts now moving up to the pull up bar. I just jumped up. Uh, he's a little safer, but at some point, you got to start banking some points and getting yourself some insurance from, from the cuts that are going to continue until we're down to 10. I think part of it, too, is that you know, you're looking at we came in with 30 athletes. You're sitting dead last in the event currently. And there's still eight minutes to go. This event ain't going to get easier in the right. next eight minutes. Right. It's going to compound exponentially as you get towards the end of this event. Jacob Hepner, Noah Olson, and Matt Fraser, along with Scott Panchik, once they finish this round, they will then move to the other end of the floor as they will be through 15 rounds. James Newberry, middle of your screen, pink shoes. He has fallen off the lead pace. He came into this event in third place overall. He just three points back of Matt Fraser, one point back of Noah Olson for seconds. So Olsen's done. He's through 15. He'll get a break as he walks down the floor. Here comes Matt Fraser. And now Jacob Hepner, your top three in this event. And I believe Scott that's Scott Sanchez right behind him. Working his way him. down as well. So less than seven minutes to go. Noah Olsen's still in the lead. Matt Fraser taking a swig of water. Olsen is into round 16. Here's the pace Olsen has over Fraser right now. After 15 rounds, he has a 15-second lead on Matt Fraser. All of that work over the last 15 rounds is to get a second around on Matt. That's how close <laughs> it still is, even though it looks like he's that much far ahead. Right. Noah Olsen, your leader, he's on the right. Matt Fraser, Jacob Hebner, and Scott Panchik. All four men on round 16, but it's Noah Olsen who is out front, and now Matt Fraser joining him on the pull-up bar. The, the scary part about that going into the last six minutes is that that's a break on the pull-up bar. That's it. Mm -hmm. right. You spent the last 16 minutes trying to take it to the competitors. You break one time towards the end. It's all gone. Done. No, it's great. I mean, Noah's been pushing the pace the whole time. This is where, he, if he can hold it, yeah. he can maintain it. That's great. But this is where I think Matt's going to step up, and he, you might see him start to pull away. You might because Matt's just been maintaining. He's, he's not chasing, he's just maintaining his pace. And Olsen is just, he's pushing it. You if can tell it, he's pushing it hard. If anything, Matt's been kind of drafting off of Noah Olsen's pace, right? Yeah. Meanwhile, Brent Fikowski and, and Pat Vellner, they're on the upper left-hand part of your screen. They are still not through 15, now Vellner is. So Brent Fikowski in a little bit of danger right now. 15th overall coming into the event. Falls out of the top 20, he may not be moving on. We don't know when the next cut is going to be made, but if you're inside the top 20, you are going to be safe for now. Noah Olsen, still your leader. Yeah, Less than right five out. minutes but to go. Here comes Matt Fraser. So Fraser now starting to cut into that lead. Noah Olsen has never won an event at the CrossFit Games, and right now he is just two points back of Matt Fraser for the overall lead. I think this is when you start hearing the sounds of the T-Rex footsteps coming in behind you <laughs> out of the jungle. Definitely. Olsen is staring down Matt Fraser right now, and he's not blinking. He still leads. Less than five minutes to go, approaching the 16-minute mark of this 20-minute yes. event. And let's go back to your point, Josh Bridges. He really is keeping his transitions tight. I think, uh, you know, we saw him just hop right back up on that bar. Yeah, straight from the pull-up bar, straight to the wall, straight right. to the pistol. Right. I mean, he took that knee that one time, and that was it. <laughs> and that was just to show yeah. you. <laughs> that was just to be like, hey, dude, keep quiet. <laughs> Noah Olsen now back onto the pistols as he's opened up a little more of a lead than he had on the last round. He's in round at number 19. The best score 
20 plus rounds from Matt McLeod in the last heat. And Matt Fraser right next to Noah Olson, breathing down his neck, but Olson continues to crank away. And now he's back to the pull up bar and has yet to surrender the lead to Matt Fraser. Jacob Heppner on the left of your screen, he sits in third place. Here comes Matt Fraser to join Noah Olson on the pull-up bar. Still has 11 seconds on Matt Fraser currently. 19 rounds and counting for Noah Olson. We could be witnessing his very first event win. 20 plus rounds from Matt McLeod. First heat of this event, that was the mark that he put up. Noah Olson right now in his 20th round. He is on the pistols. He is in the middle of your screen with the headband on. Matt Fraser, the overall leader, chalking up his hands while doing pistols. He will move to the pull-up bar next. Noah Olson going to the chalk. 20th round of pull-ups for Noah Olson. Meanwhile, Brent Fakowski has yet to get through 15 rounds. And Brent Fakowski might be falling out of the top 20 right now. Noah Olson's through 20. Matt Fraser is through 20. Olson now onto the pistols in round 21. Two minutes to go. Olsen in first, He's Fraser done. is in second, and it's Jacob Hepner in third. The Just crowd like, trying to will Noah Olsen through this round. If he gets through it, he'll be your event leader. Then it's a question of trying to hold off Matt Fraser. 21st set of pull-ups oh. for Olsen, oh, and he's going to break, is. and here comes Matt Fraser. This could be it. There it is. And Matt, hold on. 21 rounds for Noah Olsen. A minute 20 to go. Can he hold off Matt Fraser? He's got to move. Listen to the crowd get behind Noah Olsen. Back to the pistols, round 22. Who can hang on the pole bar? Here it is, yep. right here. Yep. One minute left. Olsen, back to the pull-up bar. 22nd set of pull-ups. He's ahead of Matt Fraser. 40 seconds to go. A break for Olsen, Fraser continues to work. Olsen done with 22 rounds, 30 to go, wow. back to the push-ups. Here comes Fraser. Olsen in round 23, continuing to work. Inside 20 seconds, trying to hold off Matt Fraser. 15 seconds. 10 seconds for Noah Olsen. Look at the pace of Matt's pistols right now. Oh Fraser emptying the tank. Goodness. Here comes Olsen to the pull-up bar. Two seconds. Better late than never for Noah Olsen. Oh. First of that win, <laughs> and he will be your overall leader. <laughs> Who would think a 20 minute AMRAP of handstand push ups, <laughs> pistols, and pull ups would be such a tight race? Right. Somebody else is going to be wearing the white jersey on Saturday morning. Noah Olson has taken the white jersey from that man. But Matt Fraser is still very much in contention. Oh. I tell you well, what, how about I, couldn't, Noah Olson? I couldn't be happier for I Noah Olson right agree. now. You're talking about a guy who's been second, 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 barely. And Brent Fikowski, meanwhile, you want to talk about an opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah. He might be on the wrong side of the next cut line. Noah Olson, from start to finish, pushed the pace. He stepped on the gas. 
ripped his rear view mirror out of the car, <laughs> threw it out the side window, and just kept on driving. What that guy did today, earlier, you know, it's getting second barely to Matt McLeod on that sprint event. Second, 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 and to get in a position to get his first win against he, the guy he's trying to take the overall lead from. Noah Olsen with one rep over Matt Fraser gives him his first win. Noah Olsen, first career event win, and he's going to wear the white jersey. The energy in this room right now oh. for your first CrossFit Games event win. What is going through your mind right now? Holy moly. I see so many people in the crowd that I love so much. I love all of you guys. This feels amazing. There were so many great athletes on your left and right pushing you. You guys were neck and neck for the entire time. How does that shape how you decided to approach this? I definitely gamed that. I knew that there were some studs. I'm actually pretty uh, good at staying in my own zone, though, so I was vaguely aware, but that wasn't my main goal. So I did me. I've been doing my, me all weekend. I was walking back with my good friend Chandler after the last event. I said, man, I really want an event win. He said, hey, you're knocking on the door, and I think I just busted that door down. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Noah Olson, you think back seven years ago when he was a volunteer at the Southeast Regional and told Dave Castro, hey, you know what, one day I'm going to be competing at the CrossFit Games, and Castro in typical Dave fashion said, yeah, whatever, kid, go do your job. <laughs> Here he is, first event win in a pressure-packed situation, and he will be the overall leader now after five events, but he is clearly not out of the woods because the man chasing him is the man who has won the last two <laughs> CrossFit Games, and we know that he can win some events, and that is Matt Fraser. That guy is pretty good at making up some time. Woo. But you know, this is, this is proof that somebody else can wear that jersey. Yep, and we said, you know, mistakes by Matt Fraser could open the door for somebody else. And not only did Noah Olson kick down that door for his first event win, he kicked down the door that maybe Matt Fraser cracked open for him by uh, dropping one of his weighted bags on that. Well, part of that, event. I mean, you see guys looking at their hands right now is that I don't know if you guys saw Matt hands after that event, but, you know, Matt had some rips yeah. on his hands from there. I don't, I don't see that from Noah. I think the impressive thing was the fact that he did it head to head against Frazier. Yeah, It was exactly. like that was the big thing right there. Like that and shows this crowd him knew it too. Yeah, Look at him. exactly. Like he came in and he, he was standing against the guy he was losing to. And it's, and, and it's Matt Frazier, who's a three time champ. And he, he, you know, he beat him toe to toe right there. So that that's a huge win for No. That's a huge confidence booster. That looks like somebody I know right there. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of celebration. It's good. Great to see that emotion from Noah Olson. It's been a long time coming. He gets his first event win uh, at the CrossFit Games. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, catch our breath a little bit. The women coming up next. That starts at 4:30 local time. We'll see you then. Stick with us here on the Rogue Iron Game. Thanks for being with us here at the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games.